Hi everyone and welcome to another Kicking It With Sensei. Today's guest is a legend in historical art of Lua, an art steeped in the culture and tradition of the Southern Pacific Islands, uh, Michelle Manu. You're very welcome, Michelle. Thank you. And if you could tell our audience a little bit about your background in martial arts. Um, sure. Well, I started when I was um, nine years old, and um, then I found my instructor in the early 20s, uh, and I haven't stopped training since. Um, I was given permission to teach for the first time in 2010, and um, I've just completely been enthralled with, um, I think it makes us better practitioners, you know, to be able, someone can do a technique great, or they're great martial artists, but Stepping into the realm of being a kumu or teacher, um, it has been really amazing for me uh, as an individual practitioner because then, you know, it's interesting when you first start, it's, uh, well, you just, you just do this. And then yeah. you find out, well, you just don't do that. It, you actually have to know the technique so well in the body movements and breath and balance and all of timing, you know, all the things that go yeah. into being effective. Um, it really, it really makes you sit in that and say, well, how... How do I get through? Everyone learns differently. So it's really been a wonderful thing for me to step into that realm and now, now teach on a regular basis. And it's no surprise because I'm half Scandinavian. So um, I come from a long line of educators on, on my maternal side. Yeah, excellent. And what first got you interested in martial arts and why Luya? Um, well, I always thought martial arts was really cool. Um, you know, the, the precision of the movements and, um, of course, the striking, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, when I first started uh, in the 80s, it, it, it was really here in the U.S., it was pretty much relegated to be only a, a boy's activity. Um, but, you know, I realized uh, within 10 minutes of being on the floor that it's not a boy's activity, <laughs> that it actually... Um, there was only two of women, uh, young girls in the class. It was me and my sister at the time. And, uh, you know, very foreign, uh, wearing a gi, uh, this, the belt, everything was very foreign, even the words they spoke. Um, but going past all of that and looking at the movements, I fell in love with the movements. Um, it was, you know, I think you could say it was from uh, going from non-contact, because boys get a lot of contact growing up, right? They're wrestling yeah. and playing and always bumping into each other. Like my two grandsons, you know, my twin grandsons that are five, they're tornadoes. Um, but girls tend to grow up tea party, quiet, more intellectual, playing with their dolls, things of that nature. So it was really a switch up on, I can actually touch this person um, and this guy and I can make it work for me. And I think that's been kind of the tenant for me, even at my age now. Um, Lou has been uh, prim primarily male. Uh, like most martial arts, um, there hasn't been a real presence of female warriors in over 200 years, but they absolutely had a role. Um, I love the Lua because it's based on land, sea, and air animals and nature elements. So in emulating those animals or elementals, we're able to become more efficient in our techniques. Um, you know, wind and water, tide, waves, uh, you know, with all the animals, the eel, the hawk, um, the hei, the, the octopus, uh, you have all of these animals in which you're you're channeling in a sense and you're becoming like them and also the qualities in which they live their life. And, you know, there is um, folklore and history that talks about the Lua, the martial application hidden within the hula or those working well with one another. And the hula is the hula dance of Hawaii. There's many different styles, but the ancient is kahiko, uh, even more ancient would be uh, the ha'a, which is the warrior dance. And within that, you find the same movements, but I look at it like energy. Um, the uh, hula is non-contact storytelling and uh, continuing the oral history of the people and their rituals and what was important to them versus all the way on the other end of the spectrum is Lua. The intent to now apply those same movements, but the intent to take your opponent out, to defend um, and think of the battlefield and all of the warriors running down and using those now from no contact to full contact. And I think with a hula background since I was three and professional at 15 for seven years, 
it's been so amazing to sit in that and see those, the application of the martial within the dance, um, from the breath to the footwork, to the placement of the arms. Um, it's really been a, a beautiful transition for me and to be able to share that uh, when I teach. Excellent. And Luya is a fascinating art. And uh, how do you feel the Hawaiian culture and the culture of the South Pacific Islands has shaped the art? Um, well, it's, I mean, it's absolutely integral. It, the, you can't remove, um, you know, uh, one from the other. I um, Between the storytelling and the dance and um, passing on orally the history of uh, the people, it's, uh, it's all around. I mean, even to the topography and to the demographic in which we use the Aina or the beloved land to train, whether it's in the mountains and using pohaku rocks, um, using the water at uh, shallow and deeper depths uh, to in increase one's breath, um, uh, the cardio, uh, climbing the trees, um, you know, carrying those massive boulders underwater, uh, you know, using the tide as it comes in as resistance and learning how to fight in that. And there were, you know, warriors that were um, sea bound that uh, were experts in using the paddle. That's what they had on them: a short bow and a longer bow, and the spears. Um, you know, the expert fishermen. I mean, those were our expert uh, spearmen um, and women. So, you know, it's very integral uh, the land to the practice. Uh, so. Um, you know, there was no misogyny uh, in, in the culture. Everyone was given a duty and they handled that. And if they didn't, there were consequences. So, um, you know, not just the fabric of the culture, but the actual land and the energies of the land really contributed to every cultural practice. And Lua is no exception. Excellent. And what do you think the benefits are of martial training? Oh my gosh. Well, like you, you know, and all of your, you know, your listeners and fans know it's, uh, it's endless. And the journey for all of us is, is very personal, um, where one art, uh, we're drawn to another person, really, it doesn't resonate with them. Perseverance, dedication, uh, accomplishment, uh, confidence, self-peace, um, control over one's mind, uh, con connection to your body and the powerful movements, um, uh, self-intention, why are you doing this in the first place, uh, health and fitness, uh, confidence, and most importantly, safety, uh, being able to defend uh, yourself and your loved ones at any time and having that confidence that comes from that, um, drawing on those tools. I think uh, the benefits of being a martial artist is that uh, our fear tends to, it's no longer illusionary. We practice for um, real life events that uh, kind of uh, li limit, not wholly eliminate, but they do minimize um, fear of what might happen. And we have those tools that we can then access. And so, you know, I really think, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm teaching and why we walk throughout the world, I wish everyone could feel what it's like to have these tools and to feel um, pretty confident uh, that if anything happens, you may not know what to do, but your instinct will kick in. And that comes through working uh, our martial techniques and our training. And uh, we'll be, if we don't make it, we know that we will fight until um, we, we probably have no, my goal is to fight until my last breath. And, and if a situation occurs, I think most people either go into that flight or freeze um, because they're, they don't have those tools to rely on um, and to fall back on um, and the muscle memory. So the, there's so many benefits to being a martial artist and training, whether it's internal or, um, you know, it's funny, we start in our youth as uh, pounding and external and rah. And then, you know, as we mature, you see like, well, the body really has been abused. It's uh, probably uh, not been considered as much. And we come into the wear and tear and we start to see that we don't, abs it's absolutely not necessary to be, uh, you know, the, the adrenaline junkie or, um, 
the testosterone junkie because you know women have testosterone too and some of us have more than other women and you know everything is oh, break the window and you know i'm gonna go through this and i'll make it happen and then we transition i think into a place of uh, you know the situation when it arises uh or even in our training when we're toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone we access that but we no longer live in that 24 7. it's really wise to be able when we learn mastery of self to be able to flow within uh what is needed and um so internal external somewhere in the middle i think it's all wonderful um at each each stage of our path up the mountain during our journey <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And as a woman, do you feel you've got the same opportunities in martial arts as your male counterparts over the years? Um, wow, uh, great question. Um, I have much respect for my male counterparts and what they've accomplished and how they train the co camaraderie that they have with one another. Um, I, I think it's magnificent. And from the beginning of time, right? Because all of our cultures in some way I have been on the battlefield uh, for one reason or another, um, but not necessarily. I don't feel that I have been. Um, however, uh, you know, things are shifting and um, I was a afforded an invaluable gift by my teacher to be able to train, um, you know, with only men mm -hmm. and um, to learn those ways and to see the difference. And m my Lua brothers absolutely made me better. Um, they did not, uh, you know, in not getting in trouble with our Olohe, our teacher, um, they had to bring it. And uh, that only made me better. There was no patty cake or making things easier for me. And I had to find a way. Um, but, you know, the respect that I am shown today, which has not always been this way, by um, other martial artists, male of different arts, as well as the Lua community, all different lineages. Um, and also as uh, from the martial arts community as a whole is, is you know, it's, it's truly tremendous. Um, and I see more and more women being afforded this public respect. And I, I honor the men that are so brave and courageous to speak of the way of the woman. And, and it's not, it's not a bad thing that we're different um, and that we learn differently uh, and we shadow differently. We go into ourselves to be introspective and take inventory differently. Um, and, you know, you men have this amazing uh, way of programming where you can hyper-focus, laser focus into something, whereas us women are kind of like, oh, well, this needs to be done and that needs to be done. But we complement one another when we look at it that way. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I have much respect and I study the way, um, you know, male martial artists do things because it's very helpful. Sometimes women complicate things and yet sometimes men make it too simple and underestimate. So I think, um, you know, in that, when I do get a kind of a crappy comment or, uh, you know, I have to look at the, the level of evolution of the individual that is saying it. And most times I don't know them because now we have social media, you know, and everyone's a keyboard warrior. <laughs> they have oh, an opinion. And, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, I'm sure you've encountered that. Yeah. Once or twice. Not as much as I thought I would, but it's, I definitely came across it once or twice now, but, and, um, uh, what do you feel you've got in life from being a Lua practitioner? You know, um, I'll, I mean, everything that I mentioned earlier from the benefits of training, but um, to live and breathe in that confidence, um, to actually connect with uh, my foremothers and forefathers, you know, there is, I believe, something that is ancestral knowledge. Um, I've had a couple situations, one in particular where, um, you know, in the, you know, when we're attacked, uh, things tend to slow down. And in that, um, um, I had to defend myself at a workshop, believe it or not. I mean, that's the last place you would think that there yeah. would be an incident. And both incidents took place um, at a workshop, uh, one where I was teaching and one where I wasn't. And my uke decided, that she, it was a she, was going to uh, 
as I was demonstrating a, a rear choke, uh, she was not going to let go. And as um, I felt that closing in, and I knew I had to do something after tapping her and saying, hey, look, I'm trying to show this. Why don't you release? I'm, I'm going through it and by numbers, right? We teach by numbers so that yeah. the newer students, um, but it was a, a really packed class. And um, I ended up having to take her down, but it was interesting. Everything slowed down as I, as I flipped her and uh, my elbows went up immediately, which is our hawk. And they, as we're flying through the air and she's flying down on her back and I'm flying over her, my elbows went into this very interesting double vertical EO or hawk strike um, to where it's going to sound graphic. Remember, this is a war art elbows to penetrate her through her eye sockets and I was able to say no in, in midair and land with my forearm my wing on her throat of course half off to not harm her but um it's that sort of ancestral knowledge where I feel um you know Lua it's different it's not just learning these things happen and when you're connected and you ask for leading these um techniques these movements within the techniques come and um that's something that i can't explain with logic <laughs> and yeah. it sounds really crazy but um i explained it to a kahu um a wise man after that happened to be we were in south carolina so as far from from home and they flew him in from hawaii and he he explained well of course i said look alohi didn't teach me that and uh he said it's ancestral knowledge and so you know, those sort of things. Maybe it's Viking too. You think, you know, I, uh, you know, I'm half that too, right? So who knows? Um, but, you know, it's, um, it's about that connection for me uh, yeah. and knowing why we do things a certain way. And that's really what I've gotten out of being a lure practitioner is connecting more with the blood that pumps through my veins. Excellent. And what would be your favorite part of training? Would it be the sparring or the weapons, the history, culture? Well, I actually love all of it. Um, yeah. You know, initially it was the hard. It was the coup, masculine all the time. I was with the guys and that's the way my teacher was. Um, very intolerant. He trained us to be soldiers, not warriors. You listen and you line up and you breathe when I tell you to breathe. Um but you know, I I love I'm, I'm I'm considered I consider myself a striker. I'm not necessarily a ground fighter, even though there was, um, you know, uh, grappling and wrestling and things of that nature. How could it be if it's a joint tearing and dislocation art? I mean, clearly we would have to go for the man, which is uh, considered the lower part of the body. Uh, the man carries the woman and the kids and the grandkids, and um, may, it might be different timing that the man carries the woman. The kids go out and they throw weapons and they come home to report and guard mama. So, you know, I, I think uh, that's um, my favorite is striking, but I also very much love uh, my weaponry, which is still using the kids and the grandkids, um, you know, to effectuate that. But as I grow um, into now uh, my elder stage, uh, as I transition, I really do uh, love the history and I, I want to understand each battle on each island and um, the differences uh, between the warriors and how they trained on each island and what was expected. Um, I really, it's so much and there's always something new to learn. And, you know, with, with each day I learn something new and I try to give that back to my students. Um, so I, I really do love all of it. Um, yeah. The sparring, the weaponry, the history, uh, the, even the fitness, you know, we, um, we, we spend so much time banging. It's really important for us to spend that time in the feminine as well in stretching and keeping. I think, you know, stretching really keeps us from uh, ending up on the surgery table. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But uh, I'm a bit of a history buff myself, as you've probably seen from my channel. It's just, uh, I love discovering different cultures and the histories behind them through martial arts. So that's been a big motivator of mine for the last while. But um, what advice would you give a young girl or anyone young starting out on their martial journey? You know, there's so much to say here. Yeah. Um, 
I think there still is a level of, uh, you know, why are you doing this with anything with young girls? I think they come under quite a bit of scrutiny and their, their inner dialogue that, um, inner predator is very strong. I'm not sure with young, young men, but women are very critical of themselves. Um, especially in the teens to the twenties. And it really doesn't shut up slightly until the thirties. Right. Um, and 40s I'd say for just, some. right, right. For some, and then some are just eternally, um, tormented. <laughs> um, I think there's going to be, um, moments where they're going to be confronted with the, um, the difficulty in continuing, whether it's athletics in general or um, martial arts study. I think that these moments, uh, they need to sit in that and they need to search themselves about, you know, am I listening to what other people are obligating for me? Or is it of my heart to continue this? Whether they can see the top of the mountain or not, it, they need to sit in the moment and really check in with themselves and why it's important and, and remove all everyone else's external um, commentary and um you know obligations in which they should move forward i think um really sitting in that focusing and and understanding that these are pivotal moments for their future mm -hmm. um that if they do give in and quit um then uh they will be missing out on a part that needs to be fulfilled within them that's part of their path until they finish that they can't really move forward um but maybe that's when we come back full circle um, but, you know, t t definitely uh, not listen to the naysayers, criticism, um, and actually use that to propel them forward. And for me, it's like jackhammering. When that happens, it jackhammers all of the cement that I've actually put around my feet to say, I'm steadfast, I'm moving forward, no one's going to take me off my game. Boom, I'm taken off. But these are moments that are such opportunities for us because then we're able to sit in that and reevaluate. And maybe it's time for inventory and this is a gift. We sit in that and then most times for me, I find that those, uh, those are more pivotal points where I was like, no, that's nice. I've now there's more cement. I re-pour it and I'm ready to rock and roll. And yeah. um, it gives me tougher skin. So I would say stick with it. However, if you're with a, a martial teacher that is not advancing you as a female, that there's some sort of stigma there, because it's out there once in a while. No, I know not every male instructor. Um, it's different to teach women and young girls. It's difficult, I'm telling you. And, uh, you know, it's not an out for men, but it's hard to connect, right? So if you have a teacher that is not advancing you, um, that, you don't, that is maybe going lighter, or on the flip side is abusive, then yes, absolutely sit in that and ask yourself, is this the right art? Yes, possibly. Then maybe this isn't the right teacher, but persist. Do not give up if it's important for you to reach your black belt or a certain level or to compete, whatever it is that's important to you, commit to yourself, keep your word and do what you must. Um, that that's my advice <laughs> and who would you consider a good female role model on martial arts today wow um you know there's so many amazing women in the martial arts community all over the world globally and they are they're they're experts in their respective arts and you know i i admire that and i try to know as many as possible um because we're not alone there's quite a few of us out there now that i've been studying for decades um i would say you know it's it's both genders is to kill the ego um it's the heroes of today and the role models are the ones that silence the ego um which is really hard on social media everyone wants you know accolades and <laughs> all of these these things now right mm -hmm. recognition if you will but those that shut their mouths um uh, that come in humility that want to impact one another and they support other women martial artists um, and that have that uh, growing desire to really have that close connection with others as we all do our work in our respective communities. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, I think, um, uh, you know, I was sequestered during my training in over 20 years, not being able to speak to Sensei Emmett's <laughs> and um, have friends in the in the Marshall community period we were sequestered within our own group and uh, I think it's just amazing now to see uh, I'm able to now 
have Sensei Emmett before me and have the support and support you and support others. And, you know, it's, I think those are the role models today that continue to do that and not feel insecure to know that they are in their place of uh, empowering others in their small corner of the world. And did you have anybody that inspired you when you first started out and kind of kept you motivated and um, well, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, like all of us, I think media, you know, uh, that really influenced us in those uh, power strikes and precision, accuracy, uh, timing, and uh, for the technique wise. Um, role models would probably be obviously my father, who was proficient in martial arts, um, but not in a, a sense that you would think. Um, my father, uh, you know, Asian Hawaiian mixed, uh, left the islands um, and really wholly su subscribed to the missionary way of life, which means he couldn't, he could no longer embrace his culture. Um, watching him move in, with his lightning speed, accuracy and release of power. Um, I think uh, I just, I always thought he was inhuman. I didn't understand how someone could move that way. Um, and it made, it drew me to want to have that same, if not surpass him in these things. Um, and, you know, with that, because he um, forbid any cultural practices within the home, it only intensely drew me closer to what, what, what was forbidden. Why, why can't I hula? Why can't I learn more about the the martial art the war art um so now i sit here before you uh given the recognition as the knight commander of the royal order of kamehameha the first um which the only woman being recognized as the second highest ranked you know in that realm of knighthood um for the pr pr uh, protecting promoting and perpetuating the hawaiian culture through the lua um and you know, uh, and the only female teacher right now in this time of the Hawaiian Lua, uh, my father would probably either bust out of his grave and try to kill me, <laughs> or um, he would be pleased that I'm um, attempting to undo uh, his decision to shun his culture. So it goes a little bit deeper than um, who inspired me as a girl in training in Lua. Um, it's, it's much d deeper on a, a bloodline level and on a, on a cultural level. level. Um, and and that, that, that's really um, what it comes down to. I think people talk a lot about my mom, my dad, you know, the, the great influences. But I think, you know, we learn a lot more from our shadow. We learn a lot more from events that we can't really reconcile um, and using that in propelling us forward. And um, this is clearly um, dictated uh, my purpose here on uh, during my time on earth yeah. uh, and those, so it's been quite remarkable. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, Excellent man. And uh, your father sounds like a very smart man. I had a father myself. I know the best way to make my daughters the best they can be is to tell them it's forbidden. So. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't maybe, that true? Maybe he was very smart back in back years ago, but but it seemed to have worked. But uh, fin <laughs> finally, Michelle, how can people find out more about uh, Luya and about the Hawaiian and Pacific Island culture? Oh, well, you know, it, it's quite it's it's still very much sacred and secret uh, on the islands. Uh, you you really won't find many kumu. Um, that will uh, teach anyone without the Hawaiian blood. Yeah. Um, and even on some islands, you will find kumu that will not teach women. Um, you know, you have to understand that they're, you know, the, the missionaries came and they assigned the same value for women um, that they had in their society to mm. the Hawaiian women um, when that 
is not uh, accurate. So it was written uh, history and what we what a lot read about is written from the eyes of the missionary of what the role of the woman should have been. Wow. Um, so, you know, that also perpetuates through the islands and um, they straddle the fence of being Christian as well as welcoming their kupuna and uh, which is the, the, the ancients and the ancient ways. And it's a very, uh, I don't know how they do it, <laughs> but they do it. And, um, you know, with that, um, you, you can find multiple teachers, um, but uh, I don't know right now of anyone else teaching remotely, um, which makes it very hard to promote the Lua um, it, it's throughout the world. And, uh, you know, like some of the elders say, uh, and other Marsh practitioners, the, the world is my dojo. And so I wholly embrace teaching, um, on zoom right now. Yeah. And that will absolutely continue after, as I've gained students in Australia, um, they're in Hawaii, the women of Hawaii, um, and, you know, possibly Zurich soon. So it's been, um, it's been wonderful for me, but I wish my brothers would also uh, welcome teaching online and welcoming others of non-Hawaiian blood, um, because it's really important to not let this information die. Um, so you can find um, lots of articles online. Um, there is um, my teacher, uh, Ka'ivalu. Um, there's many teachers throughout the North American continent um, that, that teach, as uh, that all goes all the way down into the country of Mexico. And that is olohe.global. It's O-L-O-H-E dot global. You'll be able to click on the uh, page that says authorized schools or black belts with schools. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, there's the Ken lineage and the New Eva lineage, um, and they are on Oahu, the island of Oahu. Um, and I would suggest reaching out to Alohe Jerry Walker um, and also Alohe Bruce uh, Keolani. And um, for my group, I'm on, uh, I have an online classroom and live classes every week based on your warrior level. Um, I take uh, Alohe Kaivalu's uh, foundation of Lua, of the premise of maximum kills. Uh, and I have now, uh, my goal is to make it more of a whole warrior system, which also is, we teach these dislocation and um, uh, this art that's very serious and brutal, but how can we teach it to some that have no mastery of their emotions? Mm -hmm. So my goal is, is to connect others with those emotions, to understand themselves more through the metaphysical science, what we call in Hawaiian pohohihi, uh, pohihihi, and also wellness. So the fitness and the healing aspect of Lomi, Lomi, the, the massage. Um, and so that we are on, it's not Koa Inc., N-A, new word, K-O-A, Inc. It, we are a nonprofit for the sole perpetuation of the native Hawaiian warrior art of Lua. And um, it's a men's division and a women's division. They train separately and uh, once in a while we'll get together and uh, collaborate. But um, that is where mostly Lua you can see um, is being taught uh, throughout the world and also on Hawaii. Excellent. I'll put links to all that in the description as well. Oh, thank and, you. <laughs> uh, it was a pleasure to have you on, Michelle. Thank you very much. And uh, Thank you very it was, much, it was great Sensei. Mahalo. And uh, thank Mahalo. you.